Hello everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Uh, welcome. On behalf of Minimac, I, Bhavti Doshi, welcomes you all today for the webinar, uh, which is Oil Analysis to Achieve Zero Mechanical Breakdown. Uh, we all know, especially since the last year, we have seen that how, uh, you know, human body diagnosis is really important to get correct treatments. So in order to get a correct uh, treatment, we always have to go through certain blood checks and, you know, other uh, reports and other tests in order to get the correct uh, and apt uh, treatment for us. In a similar way, uh, we cannot really afford to miss oil analysis and oil checks properly. Like it is an activity which should be regularly done in order to avoid mechanical breakdown, which will eventually result into saving a lot of cost of downtime and maintenance as well. And increasing obviously your overall profitability. So today we are going to cover this topic. I would uh, explain you the flow of the webinar once again, which is quite usual. We have a lot of uh, repeat attendees and I'm sure there must be some new attendees as well. <clears throat> so uh, we start the webinar with the presentation. Today's webinar is conducted by and presented by Mr. Anshuman Agrawal and Ms. Preeti, Preeti Prasad. As we all know, Anshuman uh, uh, is really highly motivated and excited about his uh, journey and spreading a lot of awareness uh, in this field towards lubrication, reliability and contamination control. And Preeti has been a part with us in our technical service department as a consultant. And we will be having a presentation by both of them, followed by a QA and a where uh, we would open the forum for questions and answers. So I would request, like every time, again, to drop in your questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box. Uh, we might miss out your important questions out there. And uh, I usually take all the questions in the order they are asked. Okay, So uh, don't feel that. Uh, uh, you know, if in case your question is not taken at the right time or if it's not taken at all, uh, there might be a case that a repeat uh, question might have already been answered by our speakers and experts. So don't be disheartened. Uh, once the webinar is over, we always share an FAQ document wherein we cover all the questions and we answer them individually. We will also get in touch with you if you give us any situation. If there is any specific uh, problem that is happening at your plant or at your manufacturing unit, we will always reach out to you and would love to help you over there. So let us present and make the session as an interactive one. We have certain polls in between. So it would be really great if uh, you all participate in the same. We would just come to know uh, what is the industry trend and how is your understanding with respect to these topics. So let me present to you Preeti Prasad. Preeti, over to you. Thank you so much, Bhakti. Let me just share my screen. Yes, thank you, Bhakti, and a warm welcome to all our participants for attending our webinar on oil analysis to achieve zero mechanical breakdown. So before we proceed in details and about the analysis part and how it is helpful to achieve this, let's focus on two words. The first one, the oil, and the last one is the breakdown. So how both are related? As we all know that oil is the blood of machine. So when it started functioning into the system, it has to go through many challenges like uh, temperature fluctuations, heavy loads, ingression of contaminations, moisture, solids, contaminants. And it uh, eventually it degrades the oil's property and leads to many component wears, wear and tear, varnish, debris formations and ultimately a mechanical breakdown. Okay. So whenever a breakdown happens, there are many factors responsible for this, the like misalignment and incorrect component assemblies of fatigues. But the fact is that 80% of the machine failures are due to the lubrication which includes the incorrect selections of the lubricants, the storage and handling, the application methodologies, and the most crucial one is the degraded lubricant in service, which could have been arrested with a, a very good oil analysis program. And this, this is due to the lack of awareness of uh, oil analysis program into the machine uh, maintenance strategies, which will helpful to give uh, lots of informations to detect and arrest the uh, costly downtimes and machine failures. 
so whenever a machine fail it gives a, a number of symptoms just like our body when we don't feel good we give so many symptoms that i am not feeling better likewise machines also give so many symptoms the first one is like heat lubricant in a system is having two main motive the first one is to reduce the friction in between the moving surfaces and the second is to dissipate the heat generated during the process and the presence of contaminations in the oil will degrade this both property and hamper its functions and a raise in temperature in raise in the temperature is a clear cut indication that your system is not good the second stage is the vibration vibration it this is also responsible because of the improper lubrication the formation of pitting scoring scuffing oil wells all this affects the machine components and increases in the vibration and even in a small uh, vibration misalignment or anything in a component will be impacted on the whole machine and you can feel it by touching on the above surface of the machine noise this is a very uh, general way even while going through a walk down uh, near by a machine you can able to distinguish between the normal sound and the abnormal sounds leakages it is not only about the joints but also the clear cut indication of the contaminations present in the oil and the low oil level this is uh, mainly responsible by uh, and this is mainly uh, because of the persons who are involved in the lubrications and the installations of some dirty uh, side glasses and because of some uh, uncalibrated sensors level gauges which is not visible to see that the oil level is low now so all this factor give a condition of oil starvation because of low oil there is a condition of low oil starvation oil starvation gives a uh, situation of wear and tear in the component wear and tear gives the vibration and noise and all these factors gives a mechanical failure so this can be arrested with a very good analysis program this as you can see in your screen there are, uh, this is the foundation of oap oil analysis program the starting with the sampling procedures selection of test oil analysis method report interpretations so we will uh, give a detail on all the subjects uh, in upcoming slides so before that let's have a poll and opinion from your end i would request everyone to please vote on this yes the result was very much expected right okay so yes in the next slide yeah this this is a picture depicting uh, depicting a um, gear boxes and we will share that locations what are the right locations for a sampling so what is the objective of a sampling the objective of a sampling is to get the representative oil sample which will give you the n number of information that what is happening inside the system the first location which is generally used is uh, this field cap or a breather or we'll say hatch hatches where one has to open the field cap and then using a dipstick measuring the level of the oil and then uh, with a drop tube method uh, the sample is drawn out and uh, it is closed after that 
So while the process of opening it and closing it and using the dipstick, the, the dipstick might be of dirty condition. See, then and a lots of moisture contamination get increased. The surrounding dust and dirt particles get jumped into the system. So this is a prominent point of contaminant ingress. So we generally don't suggest this as a sampling point. The next one is the drain wall. So as you can see in the picture, and yeah, as you can see in this picture, what is the oil condition in the machine? The top layer is the first clear one and the middle one is there. At the bottom of this tank, the free water, dust, dirt, sludges, everything gets settled. So for taking the sample from this location, one has to first uh, take the sample, uh, um, take out the oil in another bottle and flush it for six to seven times in minimum and uh, take the fresh sample in the another bottle. So, uh, and still the representative oil is, is still a question mark from this location. So as we uh, all you have voted that this is the most practiced, but the dirtiest sampling location. The next is the return line sample, which is, is still is not advisable because it is not giving the correct uh, uh, content of the any uh, oil sampling location. Uh, the it has it uh, is it is coming through a uh, heat exchanger or a condenser, and it is containing more contaminant than it is present in the system. Then is the vacuum drop tube method through a uh, deep point or a mid point where uh, this tube is again uh, inserted into the tank at the this location, and the machine has to stop for taking the sample. And as a uh, right location is two inch below the top layer of the uh, oil, two inch above the bottom, two inch away from the uh, side wall and two inch away from the moving part. So taking the sample from this location is, is still a challenging one. And uh, because of this hurdles, um, people generally take the sample from the uh, drain wall. So what we suggest is the installation of minimum sampling point, which is a time saving, of course, and it is giving the representative oil and the pitted, pitted tube at the right location will always give the representative sample. So this is all about the sampling procedure. And there, these are few do's and do nots for the sampling, like take the sample always from the live location, not from the dead end, and uh, have some procedure, uh, written procedure and what, like last, uh, when you have taken the sample, when is the next sampling date uh, is coming on and use some dedicated uh, dedicated equipment, clean, dry equipment for uh, taking out the sample and always flush before taking the samples. And wherever there is a sampling point, Tag a tag with uh, tag your machine with a sampling. This is our sampling location point, and always sample with the uh, right procedure and the tech, uh, right te technical person. Okay, now we have taken the sample. Uh, just a minute. Hmm. Now we have taken the sample. Uh, it's time for the selection of test. You can see this chart. Uh, not how. Huh. You can see this chart where we have given some uh, what are the oils and the on-site test and off-site test and the frequencies. As a frequency and the intervals of a oil testing should always be uh, there to give the evaluation of any wear generation. This is the importance of uh, evaluation uh, frequency and it should always be shorter than the MTBF, mean time, mean time between failures. So you can see the offsite selection, offsite test, FTIR, flashpoint, RPBOT, elemental analysis, ferrography. This should have some dedicated lab performed in the dedicated lab with uh, a automated machines and the trained professionals who are very certified to do this step type of tests. They like RPBOT, which is uh, giving the uh, 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 remaining useful life of oxidation. And uh, flashpoint, it is used to determine the uh, uh, mortality and the fire resistance. 
ferrography which is used to determine the ferrous and uh, non ferrous uh, wears in the oil sample ftir which is the uh, a higher version of anal elemental analysis which is giving the additive present in the oil the metallic content present in the oil and quantifying the particles so these are all about the offsite test monthly which is to be performed in the monthly to quarterly and for the online te on site test there is a particle count which is used to measure the particles con solid particle contamination present in there viscosity moisture viscosity to check the de deviations in the viscosity level moisture test to check the presence of uh, moisture tan which is a very important test for the ehc fluid because uh, which determines the formation of acid and uh, in the oil and it is a very important test which should be performed on monthly basis you will see uh, case studies uh, in the upcoming slide where because of the tan value not in check uh what severity has uh, and on that and tbm which is um, on a yearly test uh, uh, this is for the diesel and gas engine this is so now we have selected the test the next uh, is the setup of on site lab so you can see some pictures of on site equipment automatic carl fischer titrator this is used to uh, check the moisture contamination present in the uh, oil and it is uh, helpful to check the def dissolved emulsified and free water all three phases can be checked with this automatic carl fischer titrator portable online and offline laser particle counter uh, we can check the nas1638 and iso4406 with this uh, online and laser particle particle counter viscosity comparator which is used to check the any deviations in the viscosity which is the recommended one and uh, how where our viscosity is now um, millipore mm, patch test kit in which a patch is used to check the presence of any solid contamination and it can be uh, referred with a standard chart that which type of contaminants is particles is present in our oil hydro gauge the water test kit that if because uh, with the help of differential pressure in the uh, solution we can measure that there is a um, presence of moisture contaminants in this so all this setup of an uh, on site lab uh, will help you to give the real information real time information about the oil parameter and which is help to predict any failure predict any failure it is quick and easy and economical to run and with this all thing will be help provided by the minimac to you we are there to design your on site lab in a very limited space and we can also give you the awareness and knowledge on machinery lubrication and oil analysis and help your uh, maintenance team and your in the company team to uh, aware on the oil analysis and lubrication reliability this is all the benefit of setting up a on site lab in case in case um one second in case uh like there is any challenges of for setting the the on site lab or as you have seen in the previous slide that off site set test should also be performed to check the uh, wear condition the lubricant conditions the health conditions of this uh, oil we suggest you how to choose the off site lab the first one is the nab the lab should be nab aggregated and or iso 170 certified which is having the capabilities to perform the additional test wherever required and support you like if there is any breakdown or any uh, queries related to your machineries or reports they should be able to share the way forwards that what should be done and what sh should be avoided to get uh, up reach up to this condition the lab should give the turn around time of min maximum 48 hours and they should be very reachable to you over the call calls emails and give you the depth interpretations of the reports and provide you technical trainings and um, helpful to upgrade your on analysis programs let's have a poll question then about this
which section you see first in your fall analysis report limits and deviations suggestions or recommendations condition of oil date and time condition of oil very nice so uh, now onwards i request my colleague mr anshuman agrawal to take it forward and explain how the report interpretations and many more things with his experience and knowledge thank you thank you thank you so much preeti and i welcome you all i hope uh, preeti has set the stage warm for everyone and there must be a lot of questions which i am seeing on the q and a section already you guys have uh, filled up the q and a box with multiple questions quite interesting ones we would be coming on to those questions when we once we finish up with this presentation okay so we were talking about the steps for report interpretation i would repeat it the first step we need to understand the uh, test what kind of test we are going to perform uh, then second is we need to understand the limits the minimum and the maximum limits for each of the tests that we are performing the third one is observation of the deviations so we already have our uh, test results we have our limits now it's important for us to understand how much we have deviated from the acceptable limits and if the test report provides certain graphs and trends we need to understand those as well now many of us normally check out only the final outcome of the results that is whether it's a normal result or a caution or a critical report however it's very important for each one of us uh, as a very responsible maintenance professional that we get into the depth of the reports rather than just seeing whether they are normal or caution and file up in our records so the first three steps are very important where we understand the value of the oil sample the test results we understand what are the limits uh the limits is certainly a challenging topic we can discuss in the uh, coming up slides and the third one is the deviations based on the test report if it is a offsite test report or from our internal lab there might be certain recommendations also which our oil analysis practitioners would have given so we can check whether the oil is discardable or usable further based on those suggestions we can act we can take our actions many times these laboratories suggest you to go for purification or reclamation of the oil so we can do that if it is required and last but not the least if we have gone for some high level uh, test parameters like weir debris analysis so we might be able to identify exactly what machine parts are wearing out and because of which our oil is getting deteriorated or getting contaminated so as per a weir because of which the oil analysis reports have got deviated yeah you can shift the slide so under the report interpretation we have given you a small, small synopsis of what kind of tests you would normally be performing and what kind of deviations or acceptable limits you can assume for your oil so one is viscosity which is a very common parameter uh, in normal conditions we say plus minus 10% of your standard viscosity is acceptable this is as per the lubricant suppliers as well but if you want to uh, raise a caution for your oil analysis program you can set it at plus minus 15% change and a plus minus 25% change is of course something which is very critical and you might have to take an immediate action on that so this is about viscosity you might be checking your viscosity at 40 degree centigrade or 100 degree centigrade based on the oil that you are using for the analysis uh then comes the tan value or the acid number so for acid number there are certain uh, normal ranges for the gear oil and for the hydraulic oil which has been mentioned here and uh, so on and so forth if these deviate by around 1 tan value then probably you might have to consider it as a critical one coming to water water for most of the lubricant systems and uh, hydraulic systems less than 500 is considered as a normal thing however if you want to achieve the best 
ppm levels a lot of companies they go for below 100 and below 50 ppm as well however as a lab analyst you might suggest that less than 500 ppm is a normal range uh, here's a disclaimer or a rider it depends on the application so maybe if it's a very critical application where uh, the oil or the lubricant cannot afford to have more than 50 ppm or more than 100 ppm of moisture certainly the 500 ppm won't stand or hold good for example the transform oil transform oil if it's more than 5 ppm or 10 ppm you would see a sudden drop in your bdv voltage values so these are just certain uh, rough guidelines uh, it's it's practically impossible to represent the entire family of industrial oils in just one slide with regards to their threshold values and parameters because there are multiple applications multiple types of oils multiple ways they are being used so hence and forth this is just a guideline we are trying to depict it how you can present it for your plant as well uh, yeah next slide Preeti, please so we are representing here uh, i have drawn this report from one of our uh, partner labs where this is a type of ultimate report ultimate oil testing report which you should normally expect from your lab whether it's an internal lab or it's an external lab you must and must expect such kind of a detailed report so in this entire report uh, it took me actually around two to three days to interpret the entire report it was a five page report here for the benefit of the audience and uh, considering the time limits we would be focusing only on three main parameters right now one the right hand side one what you can see here that's uh, talking about the alarm limits the reference document from where the alarm limits have come i'm sure in the q and a section a lot of you would be asking what should be the reference limits what should be the acceptable limit for my oil now i must say that in the previous webinars as well we have pointed out the same thing that there is no standard thumb rule for the reference limits you must always follow what your oem has suggested so in this particular test report the oem is a siemens gas turbine uh, with a certain uh, model number of siemens gas turbine and they have a certain oil which they are using in their gas turbine so there is a standard manual by siemens which talks about the alarm limits exactly same thing you might have to look out for in your equipment manuals so in your manuals browse through the pages go to the page which talks about the lubricants understand what is the monthly frequency of lubricant testing what is the limits what they have set for your oil and your application based on that design your own reference values coming to number two we are talking about the wear condition a wear condition is something which is talking about the wear elemental analysis many times we do do this uh, wear elemental analysis but we don't have the reference values so we might not be able to understand what are the reasons or what are the deviated values in our wear elements for that you need to have a reference value for that as well then comes the oil condition now under oil condition there are multiple reports and multiple tests certain tests are known as the primary tests which a lot of people uh, do a lot of plant professionals do and those are done at a very higher frequency like Preeti talked about in previous slide on say a monthly frequency many people where they find that oil analysis is too important a criteria for them they might also do on a weekly basis so these oil conditional parameters the frequency can be decided and based on that you can keep on doing your oil condition analysis the most important thing for doing a test is the method of doing the test if your method is not proper and if your method is not standard then you might land up reporting a wrong result so that's why in this report you might see the second column talks about the test method what kind of method has been followed most of these oil analysis uh, activities they have a standard astm standard or iso standard or if not an ASME standard. So these methods must be written on your test report. Many times we have seen that uh, even for a very simple test like moisture contamination, every oil has got a different sub method. Like under the ASTM standard, there would be method A, method B, method C based on the oil what you are testing. 
so the method is very important if you are analyzing a particular report and if you see some uh, very deviated values you might question the method as well and hence the method of testing on the test report must be mentioned the third column talks about the unit of measurement so of course that would be there in almost all the test results however if your test analysis lab is not giving you the units you must emphasize on giving the unit of the test results because many of them might be following the si standard few of them might be following the british standard and hence the method as well as the unit both are important the subsequent columns what you can see on the test report is the trend so there you have got a trend of previous samples and a trend of the current sample so the date of the sample the uh, machine name of the sample the test lab sample test number the test date number everything is mentioned on the top and the test results are also mentioned as per your previous sampling as per your current sampling so that you can compare your results so such a kind of a report is something which is a complete report if you find such a reporting you must be glad about your test lab however if you are not having such a lab who is giving you results in such a in elaborate form you might request to do that so you are free to check out what are the columns and based on that plan your own test report formats so these are some subsequent pages of the same test report where you can also do a trend monitoring so many times the numbers would be quite difficult to interpret and hence you might uh, want to have a graphical representation of your entire trend so certain important parameters like nas class or iso class where you might not want to deviate on a very frequent basis so you can have a graphical format of uh, representation so that you can understand uh, what is getting deviated and what is going down now this is a test for the ruler test what uh, you can see on the graphical representation is ruler rpvot ftir so these tests have been performed over multiple years like if you see the numbers although very tiny you can see it's uh, 2016 to 2019 trend so in a three year trend you can always understand which of the parameters are falling down so you can easily identify that one of these parameters of the ruler test it's falling down successively over the years and thereby you can understand that yes there is something wrong going on with your additive levels in the oil now coming to this test that's a varnish test that's a mpc mpc stands for membrane patch colorimetry and this is a very common test for testing the varnish potential in your fluid varnish can be present in soluble form as well as insoluble form so you can see that this lab report gives you both the forms of solid uh, of uh, soluble as well as insoluble varnish formation uh, again the trend over a year or so like couple of years three years or four years very important for varnish formation detection because varnish formation doesn't happen in weeks or months it happens over long durations and hence you need to understand the trend over last certain number of years so it's important to monitor the trend over 4 5 years so that if you can see here there is a very slight increase over the trends of varnish uh, contamination or varnish presence it's rising from a level of 15 mpc and going up to a level of 25 mpc which is actually considered as a caution level so this particular plant uh, which is having a uh, steam turbine or a gt sorry gas turbine from siemens they need to take care of uh, their fluid with regards to varnish and hence this kind of a report or interpretation of report can give them the right analysis at the right time and right identification of an upcoming problem this is about the wear condition we already talked about much about the graphical formation and the trends so we can proceed contamination condition so representation can happen with the graphs for almost all of them however you need to take care of only those graphs and representations which are very important in terms of analysis and in terms of contamination understanding now coming to the interpretation part subjective interpretation part so if there is an increase or decrease of viscosity 
what might be the possible reasons these are certain subjective uh, answers to them like uh, you might have uh, insoluble content you might have water contamination there might be certain mixture of a higher or a lower viscosity lubricant into your oil which might be changing your viscosity of the oil now you must understand that i'm not talking about uh, viscosity falling down or viscosity going up it's always about both because viscosity is a parameter which is uh, even if it is low it might be wrong for your oil and if it is high it might be again bad for your oil so viscosity must be at the optimum level as we talked about earlier it must be plus minus 10% range as prescribed by your oem coming to the next point that is increase in total acid number if such a kind of report happens to come in front of you you must understand immediately that oil is oxidizing and that might lead to overheating in future so as we talked about certain symptoms of heating so if you want to avoid that heating condition you need to answer the oil oxidation problem much earlier to that presence of water contamination if you find that the water ppm levels have gone up whether it is free water or it's dissolved water or emulsified range of water water might be a very hazardous impurity for your oil and uh, it might lead to corrosion it might lead to a poor film thickness it might lead to certain phenomenon like hydrogen embrittlement where a massive amount of metal can erode from the surfaces of your mating surface deviations in the antioxidants so there are certain antioxidant additives in your fluid and if there are certain deviations in those you can understand that these would lead to varnish formation and sludge formation in your fluid now sludge and varnish both go hand in hand and sludge and varnish both can lead to uh, sticking problems in hydraulic systems wall sticking problems they can lead to a certain level certain layer getting deposited at the bottom of your tank of the lubricant tank they can lead to sudden breakdowns because of low pressure in your hydraulic systems and multiple other things now whatever we talked about so far like we need to identify a potential failure much before it actually happens like here i would like to cite you one uh, hollywood movie minority report what was happening out there they used to identify or predict a future crime and based on that they need to remove the entire possibility of that crime altogether so if that has to be understood what we are doing with an oil analysis program we are trying to identify a future breakdown of my equipment before i identify the vibration related symptoms or much before i identify a noise or heat related symptom if i do my oil analysis program on a perfect frequency if i do my interpretations well then i might identify a future failure or future breakdown of my lubrication system much in advance so if i do that much in advance i would be able to rectify it i would be able to avoid that situation altogether i might be able to have a standby for myself so there are multiple things i can do which would lead to a continuous production a continuous manufacturing without any breakdown of my system so if we need to reduce our mechanical failures and our breakdowns we need to certainly do a proper oil analysis follow the instructions given in terms of sampling follow the instructions of oil analysis methods and oil analysis interpretation so this particular graph what you can see in front of you talks about the entire webinar purpose so if we can proceed our oil analysis program much before the failure point we have done our job as reliability engineers or maintenance engineers or lubrication engineers so the type of mechanical breakdowns if we are not able to address them in time 
multiple types of breakdowns we encounter in our daily lives. Like uh, we have certain hydraulic system uh, maintenance engineers around, so they might be facing server wall failures. If we have certain uh, lubrication system maintenance engineers around us, there might be pitting related or erosion related or abrasion related problems in our inner race of the bearings. If we have gearbox uh, maintenance engineers around, they might be seeing certain tooth failures with regards to gearboxes. Uh, if you are maintaining your pumps, you might be seeing starvation related problems and uh, pump and motor failure related problems. So multiple breakdowns, one solution, do oil analysis much in advance. So what would be the reasons for your mechanical breakdowns? This is a slide I believe we have been talking about in multiple webinars previously as well. And uh, there might be reasons like particulate contamination, uh, water contamination. There might be reasons related to inadequate sealing in your systems, then uh, improper lubrication because of oil starvation. So most of these uh, problems or most of these symptoms, you would certainly be able to identify with an oil analysis program. Now time for some case studies. So we have two case studies, I believe in this webinar. One is from a power plant, a coal based power plant where the EHC system, which is one of the most important part of a turbine or a steam turbine, this EHC system failed all of a sudden. And the reason was identified it as a tan value deterioration and particle count deviation in the oil properties. So this particular plant was following a very good practice with regards to oil purification. They were following all the best practices of lubrication in the plant. But one thing that they might miss out was a good oil analysis program. The reason they did not have an on-site laboratory for doing the oil analysis. They depended a lot on the external labs. So while your dependence is on the external labs, the results, the timing of the results is always very important. If your results don't come in time, if your oil analysis uh, sample collector doesn't come on time, if the frequency is not maintained well, then you might be missing on certain very important symptoms, which might lead to a major loss or breakdown for your plant. So for this power plant, because of the loss of power generation, and because of the loss in their equipment breakdowns, the total impact was around uh, five crores Indian rupees. Uh, another example, uh, something from the positive side of it. So there's another case study where uh, it's the largest newsprint manufacturer of India. And uh, they have a very robust oil analysis program they do the contamination control uh, very well. So before having such a program implemented, the average breakdown cost for them was around two crores. Now, after they have uh, done this implementation of the oil analysis program, they have a saving of a net saving of around two crore approximately. Now, about the maintenance strategies, you might have seen this uh, multiple times earlier. So we would like to remind you that if you do a proactive maintenance, which we all aim at, we would like to achieve the best maintenance in our systems with proactive maintenance for our systems. For that, you need to do oil analysis under your proactive maintenance program. So if you do that earlier, the root cause of all your breakdowns would be identified. But if such an oil analysis program is not done, then of course, there would be a much lesser saving that your organization would be incurring, a much lesser saving. The reason, the same reason, <clears throat> we would be able to identify the future breakdowns at a much later stage. And the later we do the things of rectification, the more cost is what we would incur. 
and thereby in order to have the best saving it's recommended to do oil analysis as a part of your proactive maintenance program in your plant so as a starting step what you can do right away is if your plant or uh, your manufacturing unit is not having a laboratory for doing the oil analysis maybe you could start setting up a lab for oil analysis at least for the basic tests so the basic on site tests like uh, solid particle contamination can be done at your place moisture contamination can be done viscosity viscosity is something which can be done on hand so you have a handy device called vis gauge instrument which can be carried by the oil supervisors lubricant supervisors of your company so they can keep at least four to five of these vis gauges in your team and they can do the test on the machine itself on the equipment itself you need to have certain trained personnel for that you can have a report a standard report format which would follow the trend which would give you the historic data as well as it will give you the futuristic projections so all these things you would be glad to know that uh, minimax systems is providing you uh, with regards to the consultancy of the entire setting up of a portable laboratory so rila program of minimax systems the reliability improvement through lubrication assessment so under this program there is a section portable oil analysis lab setup so if you are a little confused on where to go for setting up this lab uh, you have your answer there you can write to minimac uh, team and you would get your answers on how to set up an oil analysis laboratory for your plant so we would be very happy to answer your queries over to you bhavti thank you so much thank you so much anshuman for that wonderful presentation i hope uh, it has cleared a lot of doubts already uh, we have a few questions already in the q and a box waiting so we'll not take much time uh, i want everyone to know that uh, lubinar is a series which we conduct every 15 days so we have a technical topic and uh, covered by our experts so on 29th of july 15 days from now we have a topic uh, to be covered that is on varnish uh, which is uh, kind of a silent killer for your hydraulic and lubrication systems so we look forward to seeing you on the 29th july 2021 i would request if people would like to register right now uh, you can do so there is a link that i have shared in the chat box so you can register on the same by submitting a few of your details and any which ways uh, we will get in touch with you via email and on linkedin if you have given your whatsapp number then maybe via whatsapp as well so uh, we would definitely not want to miss you on this uh, webinar which is on the 29th uh, let us begin with the question and answer all right so we will be uh, taking up all the questions one by one i would request uh, Preeti and Anshuman to unmute themselves so that uh, it's easy to go. Okay, the first question we have is from Mr. Satish, who wants to know what is the standard used for oil particle count. Okay, I think he means the ISO four four zero six. Yeah, <clears throat> Preeti, could you answer that? Yes, there are two major standards: NAS one six three eight and ISO four four zero six. Both are used for the particle contaminations. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Das wants to know what will happen if we don't change the hydraulic oil because I know a company where they never change the oil but they only do the top up uh, whenever the oil level is low. So yes, so Mr. Das, uh, you have seen it correctly. Uh, hydraulic oils or many other industrial oils they don't need a change on a regular frequency because uh, it's normally said that if oils are are uh, removed from all the impurities or all the contaminations are separated from a uh, industrial oil the oil is fit for use uh, forever so this might sound a little more extra bulleted but uh, actually if you maintain your oil quality to the best of the levels with a good oil analysis program then of course you can use your oils forever and uh, with regards to the topping up of oil when you do the topping up of oil the additives which might have got depleted those would be replenished and hence top up is required 
as well as there might be a little change of oil level in your tank because of evaporation losses, even those would be uh, adjusted with topping up activity. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ahmed wants to know, how do we know that the lube oil selection by OEM is correct? What are the symptoms in case the selection is not correct? And he represents Brunel Energy. Uh, hello, Mr. Ahmed. So yes, if you want to understand whether the selection of your oil is correct or not, the first one who can answer you know, this question is the lubricant company. So the lubricant companies, they normally have a list of applications under which the lube has been selected for you. So you can check out with them. Also, you can trust your OEM. If your OEM has uh, given you certain guidelines for the lubricant, you can follow the guidelines given by them in the manual. However, if you feel that your lubricant is acting a little deviated manner, then you might have to contact your OEM. It might be because of certain operational conditions, certain ambient uh, requirements that your lubricant uh, might have to be changed from what it was suggested initially. So ambient conditions, tropicalization of your choice of lubricant is very important. It's not that some lubricant what we are using in a cold condition will be used in a hot condition country as well. So I believe if you are talking uh, with regards to your country, that's uh, the Brunei uh, area or Malaysian area or region, there uh, you might have to check with your OEM whether they have given you the choice of lubricant as per your geographic conditions, as per your environmental conditions or not. So that is something what you can always do. However, the best one to, to contact with regards to lube selection is the lube company themselves. So you could always contact four or five new companies and understand what they have to say about your application. Thank you. A lot of people have been asking if they will receive the presentation or not. Guys, let me tell you, uh, we will be sharing the webinar recording, which will be uploaded once it is ready on YouTube. And you will get an email uh, of this YouTube link where you can refer the webinar recording. We won't be sharing particularly the PPT directly with you over emails. It's completely uh, Minimax Systems property. So I, I hope uh, this answers all your queries uh, regarding the webinar recording. Okay, the next one is for Preeti from Mr. Praveen Kumar. What should be correct sampling point of a hydraulic system? Uh, it is, of course, um, um, after the, fil uh, uh, before the filters, sorry, before the filters. <clears throat> so just to clarify, uh, on the hydraulic pressure line, where uh, you have the discharge filters post your pumps, hydraulic pumps. So on that point, uh, you normally have a minimus test point. So a minimus test point would enable you to draw the sample into your diagnostic equipment. So if you are doing the testing with uh, an, an online particle counter or maybe a moisture sensor, so the minimus test point is normally located at the downstream of your hydraulic pump and upstream, as Preeti suggested, the upstream of your discharge filter of the hydraulic system. Uh, many times we uh, take the oil samples from the top of the tanks, but that's not the true representation of oil which is circulating in your hydraulic systems. So we must uh, take the samples from the running line. Okay. Mr. Ayer wants to know which are the most important tests, vital few parameters for oil analysis. So I think we have already covered this in the uh, one of the slide in the presentation. Still, if you guys want to name a few important tests or uh, vital parameters. So if you talk to me with regards to contamination control, uh, the most important tests would be solid particle contamination. Second would be moisture contamination. And the third would be a viscosity test. So these are certain tests by, that you can do at the site with the handheld devices. So these three tests are most common ones that you can do yourself. Apart from that, there are TAN number tests, which you can also do at your site. But it's having a little uh, laboratory setup, which will be needed at your site itself. So uh, these are the basic tests what you can do with regards to contamination control. However, if you want to do the detailed analysis of your oil, so we discussed in our slides, there are tests with regards to wear elemental analysis, 
or varnish analysis or flashpoint o point and many others so the list is long uh, you can if you want to have a reference list the best thing is to contact the oem of your equipment the lubrication system check the manual there they might have given you a lubrication chart and also the maintenance of lubricant chart so there you can identify what tests are to be required to be done okay um lingam saradi wants to know if minimus point is not available in the equipment then what should be the sample point actually minimus point is generally not found in the gear boxes or any equipment this has to be installed uh it's a, a additional thing which is a, a, your time saving and of course as i mentioned it gives the representative data so there are many vendors which gives the uh, supplies this um, minimus um, equipment minimus points equipment so you can install it at the right location okay thank you uh, mr uh... Oliete Clement asking a good question. In summary, is it possible Lunchman to achieve zero mechanical breakdown? And if yes, uh, how is it related to oil analysis? So thank you, Mr. Clement. I believe uh, you are my friend from Nigeria. We discussed last webinar as well. So this webinar, what we talked about is all about uh, the topic what you have asked, that is uh, oil analysis leading to zero mechanical breakdown. so the latter portion of our webinar talked about how to identify the oil analysis reports and how to identify the future potential breakdown in your equipment by using the oil analysis so if you do the oil analysis on a regular basis if you do your interpretations well then you might uh, be one minority report uh, hollywood hero where you can identify a future crime or a future breakdown going to happen with your equipment so if you can do that then you just like in minority report movie of hollywood they uh, dreamt about having a crime free world so here in our equipment as well if we do the right oil analysis interpret our results well then why not uh, achieve a breakdown free world for ourselves very well explained um so we basically have one poll to launch which is about the future topics that we would want to know uh what you guys would want to hear out from us and uh we would really consider the majority you know we get on the topic so let's let's uh, launch the poll and uh let's know what people are interested in all right i guess uh, people are still answering and could we have the results on the screen awesome that's an interesting response we will later uh, look into it and also get back to you with further topics what exactly we are working on uh, in a few days to come okay right. uh, let's talk about all of the above so which means that we need to conduct this webinar on a uh, frequent basis so that we can cover all the topics certainly Okay. Um, the next one is my HPU contain two thousand contamination with water. How to remove contaminated oil thoroughly from the system? Okay. So I believe it's a hydraulic power unit HPU having a two thousand liters of oil, hydraulic oil, I guess. So if it's contaminated with water, I would suggest the first thing you need to do is the testing for moisture contamination. so there are two or three types of tests that you can perform the laboratory test is called the carl fischer test and you can do it in your in house lab or you can also do in a off site laboratory near your plant and uh, based on that you need to take a call on how to remove the water so if the water contamination is present in free form and if the free form moisture or water is say more than 5000 ppm then you might have to go for methods which remove the free water very fast one of those methods which we discussed last uh, time was a coelacer a coelacer based uh, purifier which can separate the free water on a very fast track basis 
if suppose your oil analysis program suggests the moisture is in the range of 1000 to 2000 ppm then you might have to go for a low vacuum dehydrator system which is based on vacuum dehydration principle and that would ensure that any free emulsified and dissolved content of moisture would be separated from your oil so based on the oil analysis report the correct technology for doing the analysis for doing the removal of that contaminant can be selected and uh, i believe uh, a lot of you polled for contamination control related webinar for future so maybe the upcoming webinar after the varnish formation uh, webinar we can have uh, with regards to contamination control certainly okay um mr upadhyay wants to know if drain point is not sampling point then why gearbox gearbox manufacturers does not provide sampling point in gearbox and suggest to take sample from drain point and return line so yeah prithvi you're going to answer it uh you answer first i will add on that sure okay so yeah when it comes to oems decisions about giving uh, sampling points and multiple uh, uh, ports on your equipment certainly that's something which is an oem decision which we can't much comment on uh, it might be a marketing point of view or strategy point of view decisions from their side but when it comes to the testing and sampling it's quite logical then when you draw a sample from the bottom most point of your gearbox then you are most likely to draw the dirtiest portion of your oil in that particular system so uh, normally you sample when your system is idle so when the system would be idle most of the sludge and dirt would settle down and uh, the sample would not be the right representation and hence it's important that we do the sampling from a point which is a little above the drain point the sampling location should always be a live zone and we have seen that the drain location is always a very dead zone or it is the settled one so and uh, uh, we have seen that in the practice um, the first filled bottle is also used as a sample uh, sampling oil uh, so these are there is so many lacuna in the sampling so that's why we always suggest not to use as a drain point as a uh, sampling point and installation of minimus as minimus point is the right one okay thank you for that <clears throat> okay the next one is from franklin and i'm going to mix two questions uh, what is the life of lubricants and how many time do we do the filtration of the same and uh, which standard forms the basis for report interpretation yeah thank you so much uh, franklin with regards to life of lubricants as i talked about uh, on a previous question the life of lubricant certainly depends upon how much of contamination is there in lubricant what is the level of deviation of the lubricant properties from their initial level so uh, let us understand that the life of lubricant certainly depends upon the additive levels because additives are the drivers of lubricant properties now how do additives uh, behave when there is a contamination in your fluid so if we do not follow a good contamination control practice there would be foreign impurities which would get added into your oil in the lubricant and as soon as the foreign impurities get added into the lubricant the additives start sacrificing themselves for example if it's a anti wear additive it would start uh, capturing all the wear particles and getting sacrificed or depleted similarly if it's an antioxidant additive so the more and more the oil will get the lubricant would get oxidized this antioxidant additive would also get sacrificed so i need not say that if all these contaminants are controlled right from day 0 the t0 time of your lubricant application or start of the lubricant life in your equipment if you are not controlling the contamination well then you are most likely to lose all the additives and in such a scenario even if we wake up at a later stage to reclaim our fluid probably we might not be able to reclaim the 100% of the additives and hence there would be a major impact on the lubricant life if we have not followed 
the right contamination control techniques right from day zero of the lubricant. So when we talk about an indefinite life of lubricants, there is a rider to it. The rider is we need to start the contamination control practices right from day zero. But if we do not do that, we need to understand that we have already compromised with the integral properties of this lubricant already. And in those scenarios, we might not get a long life. The second question, what you talked about is about the standard forms for the basis of report interpretation. So I don't know if there is a standard which talks about how to interpret a particular report, uh, but we gave you certain guidelines uh, with regards to the six most important steps which you need to follow under the interpretation practice. Uh, there we also talked about certain standards with regards to the acceptance limits and the reference values. So yes, there are standards when it talks about the acceptable limits and the uh, threshold values, but there might not be any standards with regards to reading the reports or interpreting the reports. All right, great. Uh, we have Mr. Kumar Ayer asking, uh, what exactly oil analysis uh, services or contracts do we provide? And do we conduct lubrication surveys and gaps in lubrication policies and help establish uh, help establish the RELA program? So, Preeti, would you like uh, like to answer this? Yes, RELA is all about identifying the gaps being between the what is the best practices and what is the current practices being uh, followed by the com industry. So uh, we will identify those, highlight those, and also suggest you what does the recommendations and give the analysis on that findings. So this is all about the concept of RELA program. So it also includes the oil analysis part, uh, of course. So what we have also mentioned here, yes. All right, so I would like to add on to this. We do have products. We do have services for and contracts for oil analysis and oil checks as well. Uh, you must go through our website and check our offerings. And if you are more interested to know further on RELA or other details, you can reach out to us via email, which is again mentioned on our website. It is info at minimag.in and inquiry at minimag.in. So thank you so much for asking that question. Uh, let us go to the next one. Uh, Suresh Mathavan wants to know, can we add antioxidant additive to maintain the oil quality? Okay. Although this question is much related to someone who is into the lubricant field. Yeah. But uh, to my knowledge, addition of additives is not that easy a task. Uh, so we normally talk uh, of such additions as enhancers. There are certain enhancers which have already been launched in the market, the global market, uh, which are not exactly additives, but they are enhancers, which can add on to your lubricant in service lubricant. Otherwise, antioxidant additives or any other additives, uh, to my knowledge, adding to an in service lubricant won't actually uh, give you much of a result because there's a proper process, a blending process under which addition of additives happen onto the base oil. But yes, there are uh, solvencers and enhancers which are there to solve your uh, problem. Mm -hmm. You can write to us with regards to those as well. And uh, we can offer you certain solutions. If you have a fall down of oxidation properties uh, in your oil, then we can help you out with those as well. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kumar wants to know, can we identify the exact reason for viscosity change of an oil using analysis? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, so as we talked about uh, the viscosity uh, changes, uh, viscosity changes can happen because of uh, certain uh, moisture contamination getting added into your fluid or certain uh, contaminants, solid contamination getting added into your fluid or maybe certain other fluids or other low or high grade uh, viscosity fluids getting added into your lubricant. So if the viscosity changes are uh, by and large more than 25 to 30 percent, then you can likely to interpret that it's probably because of some wrong uh, uh, in lubricant which got poured in by your lube man. If it is uh, in the range of 15 to 20% range, then you can uh, suspect that it's because of certain 
uh, contaminant particles like moisture or wear particles which have deviated your viscosity. Maybe many times the oxidation products also uh, have a change in viscosity and there might be a 15% viscosity change that you might uh, interpret in your results. So yes, if you do multiple tests and uh, you observe multiple parameters, then you are most likely to understand what was the reason because of which the viscosity has gone wrong. Okay. I'm going to merge the next two questions. It is on turbine oil. Uh, Mr. Vivek wants to know, is any is there any thumb rule of evaporation in turbine oil? One. And second, Nikhil is asking, in a turbine lube oil, temperature limit is normally 45 degrees to 50 degrees Celsius. Uh, between this 5 degrees Celsius, at what temperature should we target? Is this question clear? Yeah. So, yeah, when the limits are given as 45 to 50, so you can maintain anywhere between that. And there is no single point uh, at which you need to maintain. However, with regards to your uh, instrumentation, if the instrumentation is having a uh, certain hysteresis in it, so uh, those instrumentation uh, hysteresis points or lags in the instrumentation can be taken up. And based on that, you can set your limit. So maybe at 45 to 46 for uh, switching on and off of your cooler system. The second question with regards to evaporation, uh, uh, today, unfortunately, we do not have our turbine expert with us, but uh, as I can understand, maybe it's with regards to the tank capacity of your uh, turbine system. So the surface area of contact of the total tank uh, that would define the total evaporation losses that you might be having. We will address this question in detail in the FAQ, which will be released after this. Yes, yes. Um, we would certainly contact our turbine experts. Yes. And understand because it's something which is much related to the application of uh, turbine oil in the turbine application. So we would certainly address this question in the FAQ in much details. Yes, definitely. Okay, so Mr. Chaurasia, stay tuned for the same. And uh, the next one is from an anonymous attendee. Can oil emulsified with water? So can emulsified water be completely separated from oil? If yes, what is the equipment? Uh, emulsification is something which is a temporary state or temporary phase. So if you start removing the moisture contamination from your lubricant with using a equipment low vacuum dehydrator, so you are most likely to remove the entire emulsification state of your oil. And uh, this is something which has been demonstrated multiple times by contamination control equipment manufacturers where a completely white lubricant uh, is processed by a low vacuum dehydrator and it completely goes back into its normal state of golden transparent yellow. And this is something which is uh, very much possible with the Minimac uh, vacuum dehydrators as well. So if you have certain problems with regards to emulsification of your lubricant, then you can write to the Minimac team and I'm sure uh, you would get your solution out there. Yes. Also, uh, I would suggest you to head out to our YouTube channel and have a look at that video. It is Minimax Systems Private Limited, and you can wow. head to Low Vacuum Dehydration System. There's a time lapse video and also a beautiful animation showing you how exactly the system works. Okay. The next one is from Neeraj Joshi, and he has some trouble with new oil. What is the standard NAS number and TAN number for a standard hydraulic oil? Recently, they have been facing a supply of new oil with high NAS number? Okay, interesting question. And this is something which I, if I start answering, I would be losing some of my friends in the lubricant industry. But uh, this is something which is uh, very tricky, you know, when it talks about the NAS value of new oil. So I would like to know where are you testing your new oils? Where are you drawing the sample of this new oil from? So if you are testing the new oil sample right away when you receive the new oil barrels, so as soon as you open the barrel cap, you are most likely adding a lot of atmospheric dust into your new oil barrel. So any lubricant manufacturer would not give you a guarantee of NAS class when you open your barrels cap. The, the guarantee stands only at the nozzle point or the place of filling of these barrels and that happens to be the lubricant manufacturer's premises. So if you are ordering 
a certain NAS grade or guarantee from your lubricant manufacturer, you need to check up what the guarantee stands for. Is it for the nozzle point of the lube filling station or is it for you uh, when you get the barrels or drums in your plant and you can open the top cap of it and test the NAS value? NAS or NAS standard or ISO 4406, these are very sensitive tests. So if your sampling is not proper, if your uh, atmospheric conditions are dusty, then the sample what you are testing might get a wrong result of NAS class. So it's important for you to not just focus on the new oil, but it's important for you to focus on the application area. So if we are too much finicky about the new oil coming at a certain NAS value, and we are ready huge premiums for obtaining a very good or fine NAS class from a new oil, I would suggest uh, rather to avoid all those premiums to the lubricant company. Because even if you offer a premium to your lubricant supplier, as soon as you open this new oil barrel, most likely you will be losing the NAS class. So it's better to buy a lubricant at the regular or standard uh, NAS standards or NAS properties. And uh, very important for you to have a good filling pump, a good filling trolley or a filtration trolley at your plant, a filtration trolley which would have the best efficiency of uh, filtration. So we would be talking about filtration trolleys and filtration equipment in the upcoming webinars. And uh, if you would like to have any of these details in advance, you can get in touch with the Minimac team and we would give you certain recommendations with regards to filtration trolleys. All right, yeah, that was a detailed explanation. Uh, we have uh, 10 more minutes left and we'll take a few questions quickly. Uh, so Preeti, the next one is for you. Yogesh wants to know, do we need trained technicians for on-site lab handling? Yes, a trained person only can uh, give the right answers or uh, explanation about the report and the testing. So uh, ICML certification is a very good uh, certification body which gives you the um, power instant to that a person is having a good method <clears throat> for the test and uh, the subject. And uh, our training is of course a very good um, important role in any oil analysis program. All right, so I would like to add on to that as well. Uh, one of our uh, major offerings also include technical consultancy seminars, webinars and training and developing your existing uh, technical staff and people for handling the filtration units as well as for oil sampling and a lot of activities related to it. So you definitely would want to get in touch with our technical service department so that they can customize the solution as per your requirement. And we would obviously love to train uh, if you have the right manpower with you, we are there to train them. So uh, don't worry about it, just get in touch with us. All right, the next one is uh, from Mr. Sahu. Our turbine oil RP vote values are less than 100 but tan values are normal, which is 0 .0, uh, 0 0.2. And there is no increase in trend that is observed. All other tests like uh, ruler are normal. What other tests they should do? Uh, I must appreciate that, Mr. Saul, you have been doing a very good oil analysis program for your plant. Uh, you have not mentioned about NAS class and uh, moisture levels. So if you are not performing them on a regular basis, like probably a monthly basis, I would recommend you to involve uh, good NAS class uh, testing for your uh, turbine oil. Uh, one more very important parameter, which we are seeing nowadays, that's uh, MPC value. So the MPC value will give you the correct readings for your uh, uh, varnish potential in your oil. And if your MPC is uh, in the range of 15 to 20, then you can uh, feel relaxed about the wash, varnish conditions of your oil. So three recommendations from my end, that is a NAS class, a moisture level, and MPC value. If you do these uh, with the best of the equipment, I believe uh, you would solve your entire loop analysis program. Uh, it's very important for you to keep NAS class equipment for yourself. So there are certain equipment which uh, Minimac offers like the particle counter. So particle counter, if you can install permanently on your turbine system and uh, you can connect it to your DCS unit, 
uh, I believe you would have a real time uh, NAS class understanding for your turbine system, not just the turbine system, but also if you are having a EH system or the governing or a control system for your turbine, you can have a separate uh, NAS analyzers, which are online in nature and connected to your DCS system. I'm aware of uh, at least five to six uh, power plants in India where they have installed such online devices for testing the NAS class and also online devices for testing the moisture contamination, which have been uh, connected to the DCS system. So in a way they are acting as IoT devices and IoT is the next generation of our future factory or manufacturing technology. So it's very important for us to upgrade ourselves and go towards online contamination monitoring rather than depending upon offline uh, intermittent uh, oil analysis programs. Also, I would like to suggest that we have written a very good article on the turbine oil analysis, especially the steam turbine oil analysis program, where we have a very detailed chart of all the tests which should be done on the turbine oil and with the frequency and what are the deviations on that. It's a very good articles are written on this turbine oil, especially. So please go through the, it is available on our website as well. So, yeah, so you can go to our blog page. Uh, yeah, the link for the article has been posted by our moderators. So you can check it out on the chat box. And uh, this is the page where you can understand the entire analysis program for the turbines. Uh, okay, let us, let us take uh, one last question. Uh, Mohammed Alam wants to know, is there any relationship between temperature of tube oil and vibration in turbine? Uh, as I'm facing, whenever the temperature of oil decreases, there is rise in vibration of the turbine DE side. Yeah, so again, uh, here I would suggest that we need to have our uh, turbine expert okay. to answer this question uh, because it's related to vibration and the temperature issues. He has got a much uh, in-depth information about uh, how turbines behave. So this question, uh, maybe Mr. Alam, you can share your email ID directly on the chat box or to our panelists, and we would ensure that your uh, particular question is answered in an elaborate manner. Okay, let us take one more question in that case. And uh, oh, Panduranga Rao wants to know how to set moisture limits in synthetic oil. So Mr. Panduranga, that's a nice question because synthetic oils are very common nowadays for our industries. Now there are multiple types of synthetic oils and fluids. So there are PAOs, there are phosphate esters, there are PAGs. So we need to understand what synthetic oil we are talking about. So because of time limit, I can't talk about in depth each and every synthetic oil that is being used in the industry. However, I would pick up one of the most favorite uh, synthetic oils of mine that is EHC fluid or electrohydraulic control fluid. So the basis of that is TXP, phosphate ester. Now for this uh, fluid, uh, the manufacturers or the suppliers of this fluid like Firequill and uh, Kentura, they have given a limit of 1000 ppm for moisture limit. So around 1000 ppm, you're free to use it and uh, you can go ahead with the continuing of the oil because it's a phosphate ester. But if it's a poly oil ester, like uh, there are suppliers like uh, Quaker who offer uh, phosphate, uh, poly oil ester based EH oils, for them, the moisture levels can be even higher. So depends upon the manufacturer, depends upon the type of fluid, the type of synthetic fluid, and uh, based on that, you need to set up your limits. All right, thank you so much, uh, Anshman and Preeti for the beautiful presentation and answering our audience with their different queries. I hope it has helped them out and it was quite a knowledgeable session for a lot of people. Uh, we have received tons of comments in the chat box and in questions about the PPT, the kind of knowledge we are sharing. And we only have gratitude for ourselves and for everyone else that you could take out time and attend the webinar. Uh, we are on a mission uh, to get towards zero mechanical breakdown. And in order to do that, we need all, you know, all of us to join our hands together and work. 
uh, ahead in this industry. So whenever you're stuck, if there's anything that we can help you out, we are just a phone call away, a WhatsApp message or a text message away. And we provide customized solutions. So you just suggest us or share with us the problem that you're facing and we will provide you the best of the best solutions that we can provide. And if we cannot provide, we would suggest you who could provide in the market. So uh, that's it from my side. We have our upcoming webinar coming on the 29th of July, which is on varnish and how it impacts the lubrication and hydraulic systems, how it is a silent killer. Uh, so there's a registration link in the chat box. I would request you guys to take up the survey and suggest us, give your honest feedback, how we could improve the webinars and make it more interactive. Uh, thank you so much again for your time, efforts, and uh, asking a lot of questions. We will be sharing an FAQ document for sure with all of you. Uh, you, you must uh, start following Minimac on multiple platforms so that you don't miss out any updates from our side. Um, especially the FAQs, we will be sharing it via email, also on LinkedIn and uh, to, on our website as well. So stay tuned, uh, subscribe to our page and uh, keep on receiving all the updates that we have for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anshuman. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.